Hi. Hi, Arvi. Thank you for joining Hi. us. Hi. My pleasure. All right, everyone. We're ready. We are set. And uh, Arvi, are you set to get this started? All set. All right. Okay. So exciting half an hour ahead. Um, first of all, Arvi, thank you so much for joining us, and it's a real pleasure and a delight to be able to talk to you. And for Thanks. our viewers, for our viewers, uh, this is we are in the August company of Arabi V Raghavan. She is a Bharatnatyam dancer, also trained in contemporary dance form. She is a writer. Actually, She's... contemporary dancer, also trained in Bharatnatyam, would be more accurate at this point. Okay, thank you. I stand corrected. <laughs> And uh, she is, uh, as you can all see, she is beautiful. She is a writer. She is bold. she speaks her mind and she inspires us it's a pleasure to talk to her and um, arabi will get started yes i'm just going to adjust the tripod a little bit no, yeah yeah um, start 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 okay so arabi i'm going to start with art so it's something that i admire i wish i were as talented as you all are um i admire arts but i don't really understand it so tell me help me understand that how has art changed you or shaped you as a person so uh, i disagree with you because look at the clothes you make <laughs> i mean come on working with fabric is also an art right so uh, well it's art yeah that you wear it's art that you live in so i think it's a very important part of you know a very important a very underrated art because we keep talking about performing art and visual art but it's you know what art. i think it's always about you know grass being green on the other side so i personally admire the you know performing arts and all because i am really bad at it i mean and that's not even something that i would even attempt but so that's why i mean i admire your work i've been going through you know your videos your talks um and uh, i saw uh, a small clip on youtube where you know you you had uh, you were performing your uh, moods and uh, everything it was beautiful and the oh, thank way, you, you, know, you know, it's it's like it is art like you expressing yourself and you like it's painting on a canvas it's beautiful thank you i think for me that was the, that's where the switch i trained in bharatanatyam as a child i started when i was 3 3 and a half the teacher used to come home so there was no escaping the teacher and then i had like the super sensitive sister would be already and you know all set to dance and i'd be like you know playing uh, um truant in the back and trying to escape classes that was me constantly <laughs> but you know somewhere along the way it stuck and you know this love for performing and this love for i would be lying if i said the love for the art came first because the love for being on stage came first you know this okay. being this performing being seen by everybody you know people clapping for you that bug bit me pretty early on just one second one second i'm just going to turn the fan on i don't know why i've been sitting there one second i'll be back yeah 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 sure Ah, uh, I'm like a slow-moving truck these days. Month six. Oh yes, <laughs> but I think I'm pretty fast over here. So <laughs> no, because the, the switch is really flash. the switch is the switch is really close by. In all okay. fairness, so yeah, like I was saying, the love for being on stage came first. The love for art came much later. and once it did and 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 as i grew up it, you know i started experimenting i had my rebel phase where i cut my hair short and i said i'm not going to do bharatanatyam anymore and my teachers and my mom just you know waited watched to see what i would do and eventually um i did a lot of things along the way like you know this random jazz ballet all kinds of things uh and then i did come back to bharatanatyam but along the way i also realized that performing arts is where i want my life to be and that's how i i started uh, sort of when i was in college i was introduced to the uh, idea of contemporary dance and that's where that started i started watching at that point um, there was this beautiful festival that used to happen in madras every november called the uh, um, the other festival and then i think it became the new festival or the other way around i'm not sure so then i started watching and uh, you know i remember watching maya rao for the first time 
and um, you know she did uh, she did uh, this piece about i still remember she did this piece about jamuns in delhi and that sort of changed uh, the way i i approached performance and then i got to watch uh, naptej and you know all kinds of fabulous practitioners uh, or you know through those couple of years then i realized that there is more out there and i started exploring and i found courses in contemporary dance and i started watching and learning and i applied and i went to the uk i studied i came back i started working with a contemporary choreographer making my own work and it sort of you know just happened but the switch to contemporary happened because of this need that you would you that you mentioned uh, you know after seeing that video uh, where um, this need to tell a story with your body and to not be uh, constricted by form uh, you know or any formal um, sort of constructs you know, uh, so this 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 sort of embodied experience that's how i came into contemporary dance and okay. um, but what i Uh, I I still do perform Bharatanatyam not as much as I used to uh I still do learn um and I perform but well yeah that's the story yeah so but uh, let's just go a little back I would like to rewind and uh, so a decade or more back right when you know the typical question comes what do you want to do with your life and uh, when you express to your parents or uh, you know that you want to go into this field how was the feedback did you face any kind of resistance or were you uh, tried to be uh, you know shackled in in kind of uh, stereotypes uh no i've been very lucky because my father was a doctor he was a cardiologist my mom was a montessori educator actually a lawyer she was, she was a pro athlete turned lawyer turned montessori okay. educator <laughs> and i come from uh, a family a very mixed sort of background you know we have uh, uh, we have professors we have uh, you know all kinds of i ha- and by the time i was in college i already uh, had a cousin who uh, who was halfway through her phd in art history so you know so it's a very sort of mixed bag family where they trust you to make your own decisions and they trust you to be accountable for the decisions that you make so when i went to my parents and i said i'm going to study contemporary dance uh my dad said okay i i mean you know your 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 sister is a scientist and uh, she also dances yes but your sister is a geneticist and that is something i understand but as long as you know what you are doing go for it and that that was it so my uh my i've been extremely fortunate in that way because uh my decisions were never a uh, question and at the age of 21 when i came back and i started working with uh, padmini chetur here in madras and there was like uh you know it was a very different sort of a time then where uh, the economy wasn't this bad so we used to be touring almost constantly and it meant like you know being away for months on end and my family was just you know they just sort of took it all in the uh, stride and my grandmother was so proud of me she's like oh look this one is i thought this one had a completely useless degree but look at her she's traveling all over the world <laughs> you know that sort of thing so yeah the family part was the easy part for me i absolutely agree and i always say that you know family is the wind beneath our wings you know whatever we do it's if you have that family support if you have that safety absolutely. we can do anything and everything in life absolutely it's 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 such a safety net right because yeah. uh, when you fall on your ass and as we always do when we make these sort of <laughs> once in a while we do the heart kind of uh, crazy decisions yeah. it's always family that picks you back up and yeah it's that's your safety net and uh, especially in a in a space like dance where it's also financially very unstable um initially at least but then now again this, this year has pushed us back into the initial days of uh, of uh, you know instability in yeah. terms of opportunities and all of that mm-hmm. uh, but you know when you're like talking uh, given all that it's a privilege to be part of a family where you are supported in your decision and without judgment they're not Correct. going to judge you if you fall on your ass they're not going to judge you if you burn out and say you know what i'm going to take two years off and do nothing it's a luxury i completely understand how much of a luxury that's my sister giving me hearts <laughs> so i so um no but it is certainly a luxury i mean i have her in my court and you know my parents and my husband and you know my mother in law and everybody watching out for me so that is a huge privilege and and with that everything becomes easier but i also 
do know many dancers who have had to fight against all odds to do what they do i i was in one of them all the okay. fighting that i had to do was with things outside and things inside of me and this part was nothing but support it's been nothing but support all the way through and i think even when we are with people who fought against odds it um we always absorb something from them it shapes us it changes us not only your art your profession but the people who you with because you've told us what right uh, in the name of outside india you i know that you've told through europe right so you met like a lot of people from different uh, you know uh, from different parts of the world uh, expressing different types of art and how has that shaped you uh studying abroad i was first uh, you know it was the first time i was uh, i came to face with the idea of paying for your own education like i was there was me and maybe a handful of other uh, south asian students whose uh, masters degrees were being paid for by their parents the rest were all taking loans and i was like you're taking a loan to study dance do you ever think you're going to be able to pay that back they like we don't know but this is how it works so you know right from there it's been a constant um coming to terms with your own privilege then when i started working and i started touring my choreographer told me she said uh, you are complacent you've had everything handed to you and your life has been too easy wow so she said unless so you're not easy to hear yeah when you're 21 and you're an actual spoiled brat this is the last thing you want to hear right. now i understand right now i understand she said everything has come so easily to you you won't ever start dancing till your life and your livelihood and your your you know you your mortgage and your car loan and your whatever till your till your livelihood depended on it and i as i grew older i was extremely um, resentful that she said that to me then because i'm like i'm a professional dancer can you say that to me you know 21 years old so you think you know everything but as you, as i grew older i realized But there is so much wisdom in what she said. I mean, she could have said it in a nicer way, <laughs> but that aside, there was a lot of wisdom in what she said. And as I grew older, I, I agree with her. You know, art can't come from a place of complaint. It needs to come from a place of peace and yeah. being at peace with yourself. But it or, or from a place or from a place of unrest can come from either. But it can't come from a place of complacency. And when it does. It, it reflects in the quality of the work that you put out. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, when you were with some people, and like I always say that uh, you know everyone is wise looking back. It's very hard to take these comments, <laughs> retro, and, you know, especially when you're 21 years old. Oh my yes, God, it's the last thing you want to hear. Yes, and you're the smartest one then, right? You're the smartest you ever. Exactly, you're the best dancer. You know everything. Everybody else is, you know, everybody else are like idiots, basically. Correct. Correct. Oh God, I was an insufferable, cocky twenty-one-year-old. I mean, most of us are. Yeah. Um. Actually, at that age, we all believe that we are the best, right? We are the yeah, best. Yeah, and I suppose it's also true in a way. But we are the yeah, best. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right? And at some, I think at some level, it's that you know, sort of exuberant, very youthful confidence that helps you do a lot of things that you would hesitate to do when you were older. You know, that sort of. and that's a good time to cash in on that 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 you know exuberant confidence where you haven't been knocked down too much yet and you're not constantly overthinking yourself and you know saying oh my god can i can i pull this off correct okay so arbi um coming to back to the art like uh as from art like you connected to so many women um how do you think that we as women can support each other we can create that sisterhood or uh, we can be empathetic towards the others and i know we've had this conversation about how covid has hit uh, all the industries and specifically your industry where um, you know there are no live shows there's no live audience and you know there is no uh, there's no funding there's, there's no, no funding pay. there's no payments for tours and exactly. uh, even if even if the performers themselves are getting funding the the supporting uh, crew right your lighting designers your uh, stage managers they are all out of jobs for now because yeah dancers can dance from home musicians can perform from home but what can technicians do 
Yeah, yeah. And uh, so how do you think, can we help each other as women? You know, how can we all come together and help each other? I think this whole hashtag sisterhood and women supporting women and all is great. But when push comes to shove, I think we really need to ask ourselves if we do support each other. I mean, do we go to a performance, sit there, watch this female dancer and evaluate, first evaluate her body? Yeah, I mean, she hasn't really gotten back to form after the baby, has she? It'll start there. I, I, this is, I, I'm sorry to cut you, but this is another thing that who has defined that shape? Who has defined that form? I don't, I mean, why? No, I've had, I've had right? random people, mostly, you know, these, these, uh, these uh, uh, organizers walk up to me and say, you maintained yourself so nicely after the baby, ma. <laughs> That is creepy and that's invasive. I mean, you don't comment on... And the thing is, when you're sitting there as an audience, when you're dancing on stage, you know exactly what the audience are looking at, right? I mean, it's the same thing where you suddenly in a group performance, somebody will suddenly go to like slightly larger sized dancers and say, wear spanks under your costumes, no? It look more streamlined. Oh, okay. Or your, your costume, if you're very skinny, your costume tailor will be like, oh, shall I give slight padding? I mean, it's offensive. It so offensive. the whole idea of contemporary dance, to me, contemporary dance is, is um, liberating because any body can dance. Not any body, but any body can body dance. Is. Absolutely. You have to be trained. Yes, you can't just go. It's like, it's like I can't go. Uh, I can't just be singing everywhere and say I'm a singer, right? No, you have to be trained. There is a training and methodology and years of blood, sweat and tears involved. Right. Like when I do theater, I, I tell people I am an amateur actor. If I called myself an actor, that would be a huge disservice to friends of mine who actors. act every day, who work on their craft every day like I work on my dance. I have earned the right to call myself a professional dancer. But I have not, but having done 15 or 20 plays, I have not earned the right to call myself an actor. Because theater is something that I do. Because it, it's fun. I work on it when I have to do it. Not, not as a craft every day. I don't sit and hone it every day as a craft. So I feel like... Yeah, no, but coming back to this whole women supporting women. Um, at some level, we ca it can't just be hashtags on social media. And you yeah. know, oh, girl power, girl squad, girl <laughs> boss. No. Are we really supporting each other in real life? Do we, are we capable of sitting at a performance, looking at another woman on stage and being truly happy for her success without saying, I wonder who she had to sleep with to get this slot. I mean, because she's evidently not, or maybe her father or her husband paid for it. That's, that may be the truth. But even then, I think we, are women supporting women hashtag. Yeah. yeah I, I, I find it extremely... Sorry? Actions speak, I, I say that actions speak louder than words. And instead of just the hashtag, we really need to push each other. We need to pull and, each other. Yeah, and, and call each other ourselves out. Yes, we need to support. I, I lost you. I lost you. I lost you. Can you repeat what you just said? I lost you completely there for a second. Us, we need to support each other in the truest sense, not just on social media, but through actions. Absolutely. And... I think we also need to have this ability to call ourselves out constantly, you know, and yes. to really think about, am I just hashtag women support women or am I really supporting another woman and, and truly being non-judgmental and understanding. It's a, it's a huge process and I think being a mother has brought me closer to that than I was five years ago because... Okay. It, it, it forces you to be more real with yourself at some level. Okay. Because it's a, I don't know. I mean, yeah. Is it also because, you know, uh, you enter a different phase of life and then you just have to build an entire village around you, entire community around you to be able to take care of everything that you need to. And it's a lot, That's, right? Yes. It's, it's a humbling experience. Yes. You'll find yourself asking uh, people for help when you would have been the kind of person who'd be like, oh, I don't need anybody. I can do this by myself. And then you're like, no, I can't do this by myself. And then you have to, you know, uh, ask for help and uh, everything that comes with that. But I think what really changed the way I look at people and 
uh, the way I apply, I, I used to think I'm a very liberal, non-judgmental person, but it's only in the last five years that I've realized how judgmental, non-judgmental actually was. Right? Right. And it's been like a long, slow process of, I mean, the last 15 years in many ways has been a process of unlearning from, your, from when you're 20 to your, you know, 18, 19 and uh, you think you have it all figured out and then you realize you don't and then you know as you grow older it's like a lifelong process and then you see my grandmother who's 80 plus she is like live and let live what's the point of judging and you know that's where we all hope to get eventually yeah. but it's, it's a process and the more mindful we can be about that the better yeah. but I think what really puts a gun to your head when you're a parent is that there is one really small human being in the house who is hanging on to your every word accountability you want to be the kind of parent this is a cliche but it's true you want to be the kind of parent that your child thinks you are and you also want to you also want to you know sort of set an example for your child it's truly a chance to try and be a better person i think and for that i'm very grateful yeah and uh, i think everywhere to everyone who's watching now and would watch later i think we as women we need to come together just help out each other be that you know be that a mother who's just feeding her kid or uh, you know if you can just take off some tasks off her list from work just help her out over there like exactly acts of kindness little small little things and that's it no one exactly. is expecting a lot exactly and, and just be empathetic just you know just feel for that woman it's a woman to woman if we don't understand women who else will and without condescension not yes. oh my god she's a mess i need to help her no yeah we all need to be there for each other because it it's hard enough being a woman in this country or anywhere in this world at this in this, in this current climate without us constantly I mean, our activism can't just be hashtags. It can't yeah. be women support women. And then when we're constantly bitching about other women, you know, sorry for the unparliamentary language, but That's can we okay. go 48 hours without uh, gossiping about another woman? Can yeah. we go 48 hours without uh, saying, oh my God, you know what that woman did? Try. Let's try it. No, for myself also. Let's try it. Maybe yes. it will make a difference. Yes, I if we all look within ourselves, just shedding that judgment, it is really difficult because to anyone who says that I'm non-judgmental, I think they just don't even know themselves. We all need to look within ourselves. and Exactly. It's like an onion. There are a lot of layers and we need to peel off each layers layer. Layers that we are not even aware of. Most yeah, of the time. we're not aware of. Yes, it, it, is, it is difficult. So... Um, and we as a brand, Arabi, we try, um, uh, we are a by women for women brand. And yes, you were telling we, me about it. Yes. With whatever we try and do, we try and make a little, even if we are able to make a little difference in anyone's life, I think uh, we've done our job. And I love the way that, you know, I love the fact that you mentioned that you are like a very sort of pro family sort of space where women can bring children to work. And that was just so lovely to hear. Yes, um, we try and do that. So uh, right now, like I told you, due to COVID, like uh, most of our, uh, like 100% of our tailors are women. So the kids are school going kids. And the Please kids tell them they make the most kick ass clothes. Oh, thank you so much. I love seeing it on you. So uh, the kids are, uh, they have these online classes and uh, because, you know, they have patchy internet connections, they don't even have mm. internet connections at home. Um, and, you know, it's just hard for them to leave behind the kid in the house without under, without exactly, any. Yeah. So they just get them to the office and we have some space over there. So they just, you know, get their devices and they are uh, they're doing their classes. And then after their classes, they're just roaming around or just sitting there. You know, so we have that kind of so environment. Nice. I really just love it. If, if I can do yeah. a little thing just to make their lives easier. Why not? Right. And it brings so much joy because everybody is at peace. And it, the, the, this is what helps women come into the workforce. You know, little, little things like this. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, Arabi, uh, uh, what do you think, uh, what advice would you give us as a young brand? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Advice is a very big word. 
<laughs> no, but I think as a brand, uh, when I spoke to you, when we first got on the call, I, I was, I loved the point that you made about how you are a by women for women sort of a brand, but you also are very aware of growing as a brand, and I think it's it's imperative. to be able to strike that balance between doing what is right by others and doing what is right by yourself as a brand too and uh, you know so i think that's that's a great direction to grow in i think that's like a great um, and it's sustainable also in the sense that you know your brand is not going to go under because you are going because you are prioritizing other things over your marketing and your sales because that's also important for a brand to scale up but there's a right way of doing that without stepping on anybody or um, you know uh, walking over anybody and doing what is right by the people who work for you and the people who uh, represent you and you know all of that and i think i really i, I really think from what i um, from what little i spoke to you on that day i really feel like you are very mindfully on that direction so i am very excited to see how and like i said once i'm done once i'm done being pregnant i'm going to come back and buy all those cords that i can't wear right now thank you so keep going no really it's 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 really nice to see mindfulness thank you thank you so much arbi and uh, i think that success should always be inclusive if we right here progress we want to make a difference in the society we want to take those underprivileged sections with us on the way to progress and uh, this yeah defines us and that is how you know our team thinks that's how, what we resonate to it it's lovely thank you thank you so much arvi it was lovely talking to you and thank you for so many insights and uh, take care god bless you and you too Th- take care and stay safe and um, thank you for having me this was lovely thank you it was a pleasure talking to you thanks a lot bye 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 bye